Hello everyone, today's video is on Andrew Armando Benedidez, aka Andrew Pixley, who was the last person executed before there was a moratorium on executions and they were reinstated in 1976. Andrew was born on January 29, 1943 in Las Cruces, New Mexico. His father Columbus was a high school dropout who never held down a job, so Andrew had no role models or a positive father figure in his life. When Andrew came of age, he made a living by passing bad checks. His medium build and nervous demeanor diverted eyes away from the fact that he was a sneaky criminal. Just like his father, he never had a full-time job and wanted to make money the illegal way. At one point, there was a warrant out for his arrest for larceny. He had also been accused of being in possession of a stolen car, but he was found not guilty of this crime. Having no place to live on his own, Andrew bumped a place to sleep in a trailer that belonged to two employees of the local Wart Mortar Hotel in Jackson, Wyoming. The two employees were David Starling and Orville Edwards. Both men knew of Andrew's criminal ways and violent tendencies, but they still had no issues with him staying with them. On the night of August 7th, 1964, Andrew had nothing better to do than to get drunk. With no ambition, his thought process went to thinking about committing more crimes. He decided to take a trip to the Wart Motor Hotel where David and Orville worked, and he broke into a room that was occupied by a family. He broke in by climbing a stack of wood and scaling the rear wall of the hotel, and then removing the window screen to climb through the window. The family inside of the room was none other than Circuit Court Judge Robert McAuliffe's family. He was on vacation with his family at the time, but when Andrew broke into his room, he was somewhere else in the hotel watching a show with his wife. The couple had been watching a show, but their daughters, Debbie, Cindy, and Susan, stayed in the room by themselves. When Andrew broke into the room, Debbie, Cindy, and Susan were defenseless, and after sexually assaulting them, Andrew fell asleep. After some time had passed, Judge Robert walked into the room with his wife, and they noticed Andrew laying on the floor. He immediately grabbed Andrew and pinned him back on the floor when he tried getting up. Robert's wife, Betty, began screaming, My God, this man has killed my <laughs> Police officer James Jensen heard the screams and ran to their hotel room. Debbie and Cindy were killed with a rock and were in their beds. Susan survived and was most likely asleep during the attacks, but could have also witnessed the assaults on Debbie and Cindy. There was so much commotion going on that word about what Andrew did was traveling throughout the hotel. By the time police apprehended Andrew and made him go outside, there was a mob demanding Andrew be publicly hanged. Police were able to save Andrew from the mob and he was safely transferred to the Wyoming State Penitentiary in a different town so that he would be better protected. While Andrew was locked up, Debbie and Cindy were put in the same casket and laid to rest. Once Judge Robert McAuliffe buried his girls, he and his wife filed a lawsuit against the hotel so that they could pay for Susan's psychiatric treatment. When Andrew's trial began, Andrew claimed that he was a Native American and it would be impossible for him to have committed such a horrible crime. He claimed that he never killed Cindy or Debbie. Investigators wanted the truth, so they gave him a truth serum of sodium pentothal for multiple interviews. The truth serum decreases brain function and inhibition, so since lying is more mentally involving than telling the truth, it was believed that the truth serum would be helpful during interrogations. During these interviews, Andrew claimed that he did remember drinking, but had no recollection of entering the hotel or killing Debbie and Cindy. He also remembered being with another person, but his mind went blank after him and the other person split ways to do their own things. Finally, after weeks of denying not knowing anything about the murders, Andrew finally admitted that he did in fact kill two innocent victims, but he pled not guilty by reason of insanity. The courts now had to check whether he was competent to stand trial or not. Andrew met with a psychiatrist by the name of Dr. William Carn Jr. at the Wyoming State Hospital to be evaluated. Dr. Carn Jr. concluded that Andrew was sane, but he was a sociopath. After being notified of Dr. Carn Jr.'s conclusion, Andrew changed his plea to guilty. Andrew's trial began shortly after being evaluated. Dr. Carn Jr. was quoted saying that Andrew is one of the sickest he's ever seen sociopathically and that it was more than likely that he would never be rehabilitated. Dr. Karn actually said that his chances were absolutely nil. While speaking on the stand, Dr. Karn Jr. was also quoted saying, 
it meant a lot more to Pixley to kill the girls while they were awake. Father of the victims, Judge Robert McAuliffe, who was in the courtroom watching the trial, got so angered by Dr. Karn Jr.'s statement that he got out of his seat and ran straight for Andrew in an attempt to assault him. Courtroom officers got to him before he was able to lay a hand on Andrew, and they had to restrain him before escorting him out of the courtroom. Andrew was found guilty of first-degree murder, and he was sentenced to death. When the judge began reading his execution date, he started laughing. Robert McAuliffe, who was now back in the courtroom, spoke out, Laugh some more, you animal. Andrew was sent to Wyoming State Prison, and there was an automatic appeal to change his sentence to life in prison, but Andrew was adamant about not appealing his case or sentence. Sixteen months after the murders, Andrew was set to die. It was December 10, 1965, and Andrew was escorted to the chamber for his lethal gas execution. Andrew took seven minutes to die in the chamber, and he was laughing the whole time. He also holds the record in that state for the longest to die in the gas chamber. Andrew was the last person executed in the state of Wyoming before the reinstatement of executions in 1976. Mark Hopkinson was executed in 1992 after executions were reinstated. Although Robert and Betty McAuliffe got their justice, they still were not at peace. They ended up divorcing after the murders and Robert remarried and had a son, but he ended up dying from a heart attack on April 1, 1998. As for Betty, she passed away on November 28, 2010. Their surviving daughter Susan grew up, got married, and had five children. Thank you all for watching another episode of Death Row Executions. Let me know what you guys think of this story in the comments below.